My name's Grant Burks, and today I'll be reviewing the Zoom F3. For this review, I'll talk about the price of the Zoom F3, some of its key features, my six biggest pros of this device, three things I think could be improved on the device, and my thoughts on whether or not I recommend that you purchase a Zoom F3. This video is not sponsored by Zoom. I bought the Zoom F3 after looking for an upgrade for my Zoom H4n for weddings and corporate interviews that I shoot. But with that being said, I have links to items that I'll be discussing in the description. And these are affiliate links, so if you do purchase from one of these links, I will receive a small commission. So first off, what is the Zoom F3? The Zoom F3 is an audio recording device. Simply put, you plug a microphone or a line from a soundboard into this device, and you can capture audio with it. You would plug this device into a shotgun mic for interviews to capture audio of your interviewee, or plug it into a DJ soundboard at a wedding to capture audio from the ceremony or the reception. So let's talk about price. How much does the Zoom F3 cost? Well, as of today, the Zoom F3 comes in at $349.99 on Amazon. This is around $70 more than the Zoom H6, which only records up to 24-bit WAV files, and around $50 cheaper than the Tascam X8 that matches the F3's 32-bit float recording capabilities. So let's jump into some of the key features of the Zoom F3. By far and away, my favorite feature of this audio recorder is its ability to capture 32-bit float audio. For those that aren't sure what exactly that means, it basically means if you turn this thing on, see any sort of levels on the screen and hit record, you're gonna have usable audio for your project. On this Amazon listing for the product, Zoom writes that the F3 allows you to capture the quietest of raindrops and the loudest of explosions. And they're not kidding. With this device, I found that I can recover almost any level of audio. To demonstrate this, I performed a test with extremely loud levels out of the F3, as well as extremely quiet levels out of the F3 to see how well I could recover audio that was peaking and then audio that was really quiet. So first, let's look at the audio that was peaking during recording. This is the first test that I ran of the Zoom F3. I was shouting into the microphone. I had the microphone really close to my mouth. As you can see, the levels are all peaked across this entire segment of audio right here. Let's see what happens when we pull this audio down to a normal level. This is me testing really loud audio for the Zoom F3. I am shouting directly into the microphone with the waveform as high as it can possibly go on the audio recorder. Let's see if we can get this thing to peak. So as we see, we can still recover this audio even though I was shouting into the microphone and had it centimeters from my mouth. We get some pops in there still, that's just because the microphone was so close to my mouth. But overall, this is still absolutely usable audio. So as you can see, the entire waveform for this audio file is peaked. Now for most recorders, this would be a massive problem. This audio would probably be unrecoverable as the audio is clipped at the top end. And if you're not really familiar with what that means, think of clipped audio like clipping highlights in video. If you record your footage too bright, all the highlights will be overexposed and they'll appear as pure white on video. Most of the time when you try to recover peaked highlights in editing, you end up with funky distorted colors. So typically if your audio peaks in recording, it will sound distorted and you can't really fix it in editing. With the Zoom F3, this isn't a problem. Now let's go ahead and look at audio that was recorded too quiet out of the recorder. This was the second test that I ran. I set the levels on the recorder as low as I could possibly set them. And then I recorded a line of dialogue to see if then we could pull it up and post and still use that audio. Typically, if this is a waveform that you had from a recorder that wasn't recording 32-bit flow audio, you would have a really tough time making this audio usable. If you bring the levels up to a point to where you can hear them at a normal level, you'll additionally bring the sound floor up with it as well. So you hear all the little noises in the room too, air conditioning units, any creaks, anything like that. But let's see what happens when we bring these levels up to a normal spot and listen back. This is me testing really quiet audio on the Zoom F3. I'm holding the microphone further away from my mouth and I'm talking a little bit quieter and I've also set the waveform to record at the lowest possible amplitude on the recorder. Let's see if we can get some crappy audio. So as you can see, we can still recover this audio and use it for a project. So if you set the F3 to record and you're seeing some sort of waveform, it's tough to not have usable audio. I've now shot five weddings using this audio recorder and it's performed beautifully every single time. Another key feature of the Zoom F3 is its physical build. This audio recorder does one thing, records 32-bit float audio, and it does it really well. 
Because of this, Zoom went with a simple design. The Zoom F3 is compact and well-built. For reference, it fits perfectly in the palm of my hand. And for further reference, it's almost exactly the width of an iPhone 13 Pro on all sides. This compact design makes it really easy to carry around. I put it in my audio bag and it takes up significantly less space than my old Zoom H4n. Because of this compact design, the inputs are limited to two XLR inputs. There are no inputs for quarter inch or RCA cables, so you need to pick up quarter inch to XLR adapters if you do want the ability to connect to a soundboard via quarter inch cables. I have links to quarter inch adapters that I recommend and have used in the description below. The Zoom F3 also feels really durable. It's around the size of a baseball, but actually almost weighs twice as much as a baseball. This thing feels like it's built to last. I purchased some gear that I felt like it wouldn't make it through a single shoot, but this is not the case with the Zoom F3. This thing feels like it's going to outlast us all. As far as the buttons go, you've got your power button on the right, a record and hold toggle near the top right hand side, volume buttons for the headphone input on the bottom, a play, stop, and menu button on the left, and a few buttons on the top to control additional settings for recording. The device itself is powered with two AA batteries and takes a micro SD card that has storage capabilities all the way up to one terabyte. Now let's look at my six biggest pros with this device. Without question, the biggest pro is the device's ability to capture 32-bit flow audio. This feature has provided me with a huge amount of relief on wedding days. I know that I can set the device to record and I don't have to worry about monitoring the audio. The second pro is its build. I love the compact design and how durable it is. It's easy to carry and it's nice knowing that it's gonna hold up over time. Third, I love the simplicity of it. I don't have to go hunting through menus trying to set it to record in the format that I want. You can adjust a few items such as the source, phantom power, the amplitude of the waveform, and a few other things. That's it. You don't have to worry about selecting file format or anything else. The device only records 32-bit float audio. Fourth, it might seem small, but I love how quickly the device powers on and off. For those of you that have used a Zoom H4n in the past, you know what I'm talking about. My Zoom H4n took up to two minutes to power on at times. The Zoom F3 turns on and is ready to go in under five seconds. That might seem like it's not a big deal, but especially for weddings, speed is critical. There are times where you're rushing to get set up for a ceremony and the last thing that you need is to be waiting on your audio recorder to power up so that you can get connected to the DJ soundboard. My fifth pro is the battery life for the device. Zoom has the F3 listed at eight hours of record time on two AA batteries. I personally use Eneloop rechargeable batteries and upon testing the record time, I found that after five hours of record time, the device had around 20% battery left. Given that most weddings I shoot will have the device recording for around three hours on total on the day, the F3 has never even come close to running out of battery for me. I found that the H4n was consistently low on battery during weddings, and at times I even had to change the batteries out to get through an entire wedding day. The Zoom F3 also allows you to charge using its USB-C port, so if you don't wanna to have to worry about batteries at all, you can actually just connect a port charger using a USB cable and you'll have power for the entire day. Now the sixth and final pro that I really like is the SD card test feature that the device has. This feature allows you to perform a quick or a long test to check to see if the SD card that you're using is compatible with the device. This provides added peace of mind that your card will not produce any errors when recording or have any other issues. Now I should add that the manufacturer's manual does state that it doesn't guarantee that a card won't encounter any issues even if it does pass. Honestly I think that's probably just to cover them, but it is nice having a certain level of reassurance. Now let's go through some cons. There are still a few things that I think could be improved on the device. The first of which is inputs for quarter inch cables. I wish that the Zoom F3 had inputs for quarter inch cables. You can get around this using a quarter inch to XLR adapter as I mentioned, but whenever possible, I love being able to avoid adapters as the less things I have to connect to a device, the less points for failure there are. Now I'm definitely not an engineer, but I wish there was a way for Zoom to have added a quarter inch input the way that they did on the other models such as the Zoom H4n. Next, and this is nitpicky, but I would love for the door for the micro SD card slot to be a little bit more secure. When you push it in, it never really clicks into place. It kind of feels like it's just resting in there with friction. And in the past, I had the SD card door on the Zoom H1 break on me, as well as the battery door to the Zoom H4n. To me, it feels like Zoom has a tendency to create doors on their devices that are on the more fragile side or it could be that I'm just incredibly destructive with my gear. 
Like I said, nitpicky, but I would love to see this door have some sort of mechanism that locks it into place. The only other thing that I would love is if the battery indicator had a percentage to it, as opposed to just being indicated by four bars. It would be nice to know exactly how much battery I have left on the device. As I mentioned, I've never had the indicator drop below 50% on a wedding day, but if I was ever in a situation where the battery was low, it would be nice to know if it was at 25% remaining or 5% remaining. So finally, with all that being said, do I recommend that you purchase this device? For any videographer shooting weddings, interviews, or any other type of content where you need to capture audio from a microphone or a soundboard, I absolutely recommend this device. This is a piece of gear that I've been incredibly impressed with and it's made my shoots easier and more stress-free. I honestly wish that I had this audio reporter years ago when I was first starting in videography. I love the reliability and the simplicity of it. In addition to my experience, the device has over 78 ratings on Amazon with an average of 4.8 stars out of five. So it looks like others are having a similar positive experience with the product. Now, if you do wanna purchase this device or learn more about it, go ahead and click the first link in the description to check it out on Amazon. If you have any additional questions about the Zoom F3, please let me know in the comments below and I'll answer your questions or I'll do some additional testing on the device to find out the answer for you. Also, if you wanna learn my three-step process that took me from booking five weddings per year to 25 weddings per year while increasing my prices in the process, then click the second link in my description to join my newsletter and I'll send you a one-page PDF outlining the three-step process so that you can book more weddings. With that being said, hit the like button if you found value in this video and hit subscribe for more product reviews and tutorials in the future. I'll see you in the next one.